access in AWS is controlled by creating policies and assigning them to IAM identities, such as users, user groups or roles, or directly to AWS resources. Hello, my name is Alex. I'm a senior software engineer specializing in AWS development. In this video, we'll talk about IAM policies and permissions. We define policies and permissions. We will look at policy types. We will look at policy document structure. And of course, at the end, we will have a demo. Let's take a look at what policies and permissions are. And a policy is an object in AWS that when associated with an identity or resource defines their permissions. AWS evaluates these policies when an IAM principal, user or role makes a request. Permissions in the policies determine whether the request is allowed or denied. And the purpose basically of policies are to control access to AWS services and resources and to ensure security and compliance by enforcing least privileged rule. Now let's take a look at types of policies. We have several types. The first one is identity based policies and identity based policies grant permissions to an identity. You can attach uh, managed and inline policies to IAM identities such as users, groups or roles. Also, we have a resource based policies. You can attach inline policies to resources. The most common example of resource based policies are a Amazon S3 bucket policies and IAM role trust policies. Resource based policies grant permissions to the principle that is specified in the policy and principles can be in the same account as the resource or in other accounts. The next type of policy is permission boundary. This policy determines the maximum permissions that the identity based policies can grant to an entity, but it doesn't grant permissions themselves. Also, we have organization service control policy. Use an AWS organization service control policy or a CP to determine the maximum permissions for account members of an organization or organizational unit. Next, we have access control lists or ACLs. ACLs are cross account permission policies that grant permissions to the specified principal. ACLs uh, cannot grant permissions to entities with the same account. They are only policy types that does not use the JSON policy document structure. And finally, we have session policies. Session policies limit the permissions that the role or users identity based policies grant to session. Session policies limit uh, permissions for duration of the session, but they do not grant permissions. Um, you use session policies when you use IAM Identity Center and it uses session policies to expire tokens after a certain period of time. As you can see, there is a lot of policy types, but from my experience, I mostly used identity based policies and resource based policies. Identity based policy will be by far the most used type. And let's take a look at identity based policy categories. There are managed policies, and those are standalone identity based policies that you can attach to multiple users, groups and roles in your AWS account. And there are two types of managed policies. Those are AWS managed policies, those managed policies that are created and managed by AWS. And you have a customer managed policies. Customer managed policies are managed policies that you create and manage in your AWS account. Customer managed policies provide more precise control over AWS managed policies. Besides managed policies, you have inline policies, and those are policies that you add directly to a single user, group or role inline policy, maintain a strict one to one relationship between a policy and an identity. They are deleted when you delete the identity. In the demo, we're going to take a look at all the identity based policies categories, and we're going to create customer managed policy and inline policy. Let's take a look at the JSON policy document structure. And since policy is an object, uh, it is represented as a JSON object in AWS. And this JSON object includes optional policy wide information at the top of this document, and one or more individual statements. Let's take a look at a 
policy document elements and here is an example of the policy this policy grants read only access to an s3 bucket but only from a specific ip range so at the top you can see a version and currently it is 2012 10 17 and this is actually the most recent version this version specifies the version of the policy language next you have a statement property and is an array of statement objects in the statement object you have an sid property it's a unique identifier for the statement and in this case it's allow s3 read only access next you have effect property and in our case the effect is allow this specifies access is allowed you can also have an effect as denied next we have action property it says s3 get object this action grants the get object action on s3 the next property defines the resource and here we have a resource of example bucket and we have access to everything in this bucket and is denoted by asterisk then you can also have condition and in our case this condition limits access to requests originating from the specific ip range also policy document can include principle and this principle is required uh, in resource-based policy if you create a resource-based policy for S3 bucket, for example, you must indicate the account user, role, or federated user to which you would like to allow or deny access. In our case, this specific policy will be most likely attached to a user or role, so the principle is implied as that user or role. So now that we know the structure of the policy document, let's uh, jump into the demo but before we do that if you are enjoying this video please like and subscribe to our channel to help youtube recommend it to more viewers i am in aws console let's go to iam or identity access management service and you can see that we have 17 roles and two policies let's go ahead and create policy as you can see, I have a customer managed policies here. There are two policies and let's create a new policy. When you click on create policy, you are presented with a policy editor. You can use it to create a policy or you can switch to JSON and paste your policy as a JSON because policy is an object and it's presented as a JSON document. But we're gonna go back and switch to visual. In the service, right, we first are prompted to select service and we're gonna select an S3 service. Next step is to choose what actions are allowed. You can obviously select all actions on S3 service, but it won't be very secure. Uh, for us, we're just gonna go and open the list actions and we're gonna select list all my buckets right here. Next, uh, we can select what resources we want to use, right, and here, you can either select specific resource or all resources. However, our action list all my buckets uh, works on all the resources and it's not gonna allow us select a specific resource because it doesn't make sense to list all my buckets just on one bucket. Next, uh, you can also choose request conditions. You can see that there is one condition where MFA authenticated or requested from IP address. You can check that, right? And you can list your IP address. Now also you can add another conditions right you can see that there is a quite an extensive list to choose conditions from but we're not going to be using conditions right let's cancel out of this and let's go and click next right here in policy details we need to enter policy name and our policy will be list my s3 buckets demo you can optionally add description and it gives you um, the summary of the permissions here. You can also add text, but we're going to skip that and we're going to just click create policy. And the policy is created. Now let's go back to IAM and we're going to create a role. We're going to click on the create new role and this role will be for AWS service. We're going to choose EC2 and we're going to choose just EC2 as a use case. Let's click next. Now it offers us to add permissions to this role. And as you can see, you can filter those permissions, right? As we talked about, you have customer managed permissions and AWS managed permissions. Also you have AWS managed 
by job function. So let's go ahead and take a look at AWS managed permissions, right? And interesting ones are administrator access. You can see that this policy allows access for any action and any resource. So that means you have access to everything. Another interesting policy is actually a power user policy. And if you click on the power user access right here, you can open it up. And as you can see, the power user policy actually have a not action. So it allows access to any resource. However, it doesn't allow access to IAM, organizations and account. This is one statement. And then there is another statement that actually allows access to a certain actions for IAM, organization and account. Right. And it kind of makes sense. You probably won't be a power user if you won't be able to list regions, for example, and switch between those regions. All right. Let's select customer managed policy from filter by type drop down. We're going to clear our filter right here. And here we can see three customer managed policies that I created. And we recently created a list my S3 buckets demo. Let's go ahead and select that policy. We're going to click next. It gives us the summary. Uh, we are selecting SC2 as a trusted enti entity with permissions and also we can optionally add text, but we're going to skip that, which is going to click on create role. Uh, again, uh, it reminds us that we need to give the name to the role. Let's call it EC2 demo role. And let's click on create role. And the role is created. Now let's go to EC2 and I have a EC2 instance running right over here. Let's switch to the CLI and we can SSH in this instance. As you can see, this is Amazon Linux instance. So it has Amazon CLI installed and we can use this Amazon CLI to try to list all my buckets, right? And we're going to do AWS S3 LS. And as expected, we have invalid keys because we cannot list buckets operation. It asks us to provide the keys, but we know it's not a good idea. So we're going to go back to AWS. We're going to check this instance. We're going to go to actions and we're going to go to security and click on modify IAM role. And it here it has EC2 demo role already selected. If it's not selected for you, just select it and click update IAM role. Now the instance have necessary role to list the buckets. So let's go back to the CLI and retry this command. AWS S3 LS. And now you can see that we have uh, buckets right here. We can list all my buckets and there is a Terraforms bucket. We have a webhooks bucket dev and there is some kind of CDK bucket. Now let's try to get object from one of the buckets and I just cleared um, the window. So, and we're going to be use the following command, AWS S3 API, get object. And we're going to say bucket Alex webhooks bucket dev. And the key will be three ABC. I just have a file called three ABC in this bucket, and we're going to put it in three ABC file on the instance. Let's hit enter as we are expecting, right? We have access denied because we only have permissions to list the buckets, not to get objects. Let's go ahead and fix it. Let's jump back into the AWS console. Let's go to IAM. We click on the roles here and we search for EC2 demo role. We click on that and now we have option to add permissions. You can either attach policies. We can click in here and you can see again, there is a, a lot of AWS managed policies that you can attach. Uh, and in the most cases, you are going to be using AWS policies. So kind of get familiar with them here. But in our case, we're actually going to be using an inline policy. So let's go back to EC2 demo role. And in the add permissions, we're going to choose create inline policy. Unlike the policy that we just created, list my S3 bucket demo, inline policy will belong to exclusively EC2 demo role. A cannot be attached to any other roles or users, unlike list my S3 bucket demo. So let's go ahead and create this policy. Again, we're presented with a policy editor, but you can use JSON if you would like. Let's go ahead and select S3 service. And now we want to 
choose read from actions allowed and we want to select get object here down in the resources now it gives us an option to select the resource obviously we can do on all buckets uh, but we want to be a little more secure and more specific so we can select an object and let's click on add arn again you can visually add your bucket here or you can put your arn using text editor so but we're going to be using visual again and it asks us for the bucket name let's go ahead and put alex webhooks bucket dev and right here it asks us for resource we can also specify the resource like 3abc but we're gonna just select any object name so we'll put a star for us and your resource arn will look like uh, your bucket name and then the star for all the paths in that bucket let's click add arn let's go ahead and click next um, now we're gonna call a policy name and we can call it uh, get objects from webhooks bucket now let's go ahead and click on the create policy and now the policy is created and it's inline policy and it attached to ec2 demo role now we can go ahead and switch into the cli and try the command again and as you can see now we get a response so we don't get access denied anymore and it looks like it got this three abc file so let's go ahead and see what's in that file let's do less and put a b three a b c as you can see it says hello world so there's another json simple json that says hello world let's go ahead and exit this file and this is how you can use policies to access specific resources in your aws account I hope this guide helped you understand the essentials of IAM policies and permissions in AWS. In this video, we used IAM role and attached it to EC2 instance. If you would like to dive deeper into AWS roles, please check out our video on this topic.